Temi Dara is the founder and managing director of Space in Africa, the leading analytics and consulting company shaping the future of the African space and satellite industry. With several years of experience in the industry, Temi Dara advises go governments and commercial space players in the industry value chain. He has led several strategy and policy consulting projects for government and commercial stakeholders. This includes the African Union Commission, baseline studies on the four space segments and the socioeconomic benefits of establishing and operationalizing the African Space Agency and the commercialization strategy for Ang AngoSat 2 for the Angolan National Space Management Office. Timidai is a 2020 Carmen Fellow, a 2021 Forbes Africa City Under City Award recipient, and before founding Space in Africa, was the African Regional Coordinator for the Space Generation Advisory Council of the United Nations. Timidai regularly appears on various me me media, commenting on the African Space and Satellite programs, including BBC, CNN, CNBC, Forbes Africa, Voice of America, among others. He has a master's degree in satellite applications from the University of Strathclyde in the UK and is currently studying a PhD at the University of Delaware in the USA. Wow, what a resume. And we are very honored to have you with us this evening. And what we really would like to cover, we would love you to cover actually for us, is um, the, the trends that we're seeing on the continent um, in terms of the space industry, especially when it comes to career opportunities for the participants on our program, as well as um, entrepreneurial opportunities, I guess. Um, because really what we need is we need more young people starting businesses uh, on the continent in the industry and creating jobs. Uh, Timmy Dio, can I hand over to you, please? Yeah, thank you very much, Judy. Uh, let me just share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Awesome. Yes, uh, we can. Perfect. How many minutes do I have? Um, you you have you have as, as many minutes really as you like. Uh, what okay. we're looking at is we're looking at sort of maximum twenty minutes, um, and then you'll you'll get some questions, uh, certainly from the group. Uh, if you wouldn't mind fielding those, um, if you feel that it's it's running too long. Because um, I know you have a very tight schedule. Um, what we could do is we could always answer those questions, you know, online, um, you know, asynchronously after the event. But what I have done is that I've asked everybody to put their questions in the chat um, because we do sometimes have connectivity issues with with people coming in. Um, you know, we can't hear them very well. So th that's what we. It's actually completely up to you. Um, how many okay. minutes you have? Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to meet you guys. Uh, and, you know, for a start, I'd like to, you know, congratulate you for being uh, a part of this program. This is, uh, this is a very good opportunity for you. And, you know, it could be the start of uh, an amazing career for you guys in the space industry. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give a a brief of, you know, the the industry overview. As Judy said, um, you know, career opportunities, probably business opportunities, and all of them. Um, originally, this, you know, some of these data and presentation were, uh, you know, were put together for like the key policy makers, like the head of agencies. So I want to apologize in advance if. You guys don't understand some of this, but I'll try to be as simple as possible. Um, so first of all, I think, you know, with respect to Africa today, you can sort of like um, divide the entire space and satellite industry in Africa today. 
uh, to these five different segments. Um, this is important because if you're also thinking about career in the industry, you can also think in line um, of this. Uh, so you've got air observation, um, you've got astronomy, satellite communication, uh, manufacturing, positioning, and navigation. Um, starting with head observation, this is uh, this is, I think, the the most popular industry segment in Africa today. I think a lot of the people that work in the African space and satellite industry, they work in the air observation uh, industry segment. So these are folks that, you know, sort of like turn whatever data is coming from space or from satellites into uh, inside and, you know, valuable stuff. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, um courses that you can study to to work in this industry segment personally i i actually started my career in this area also i studied meteorology for my undergraduate um and you know while i was in school i i did a lot of geospatial application stuff so we're always using software to analyze satellite data um you know, and so a, a lot of the work that is done around that, uh, remote sensing, uh, GIS, um, and a lot of the application areas like, uh, you know, whether you're trying to use satellite data in agriculture, uh, in disaster management, in, um, in marine studies, all of that is around head observation. And there's a lot of opportunities in this area in Africa today. Moving on to astronomy, astronomy is also quite interesting. Um, it's a very big industry segment, even though, uh, you know, a lot of people don't talk about this, but I would say today there is so many opportunities around astronomy in Africa. Uh, you know, just this morning, someone just, uh, a professor in the UK just emailed me talking about how they've got 12 uh you know phd funded opportunities in the uk for african students in astronomy uh so this was the director of the dara dara project that's the development of uh development of africa with radio astronomy i think that's the name of the, the project so astronomy there's a lot of opportunities um i want to be sincere with you i think a lot of opportunities in astronomy is around academia uh, so that's typically, uh, you know, doing university-based research or, you know, um, research-related activities, basically. So, you know, you can, there's a lot of universities in Africa today uh, offering degree programs in, uh, what's it called, in astronomy or astrophysics. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of great universities across Africa. No matter, I can say no matter the country you come from, there's probably a, a university offering a program in this area. And there is a lot of opportunities for advanced degree. Uh, and I think there is a clear career path for people that want to be in the academic industry. Uh, you know, you, you want to be a professor, uh, you want to be a university lecturer. There's a lot of opportunities in astronomy. Um, satellite communication uh, is also an important one. Um, you know, I think a lot of what happened here is engineering stuff and you know, possibly business development. So sometimes it doesn't even matter what you study. Uh, you can always find a job in this industry. Uh, you know, when you guys think about satellite communication, you can think about your, you know, you know, internet usage. I'm sure some of you guys must have heard of Starlink. Uh, so those are like some of the cool technologies coming out of uh, this industry segment. We've got, of course, a lot of uh, companies that are operating in this area. Uh, manufacturing is particularly an interesting one. You know, one of the uh, one of the unfortunate thing about Africa today is that majority of the space technology that we use or that we acquire are not manufactured in Africa. Uh, majority of them are manufactured abroad, but we need you guys to be able to manufacture technology locally. So there's a lot of uh, there's a growing demand for people that can actually build some of these technologies locally in Africa so that we can stop going to China or to Europe for some of this technology. Um, and the last is navigation and positioning. 
which is actually a very big industry segment, but a lot of people don't even know anything about it. Uh, you know, I'm sure you guys are using smartphones, so you're using GPS. Uh, that's an example of, uh, you know, navigation and position. So these are, you know, technologies that, you know, that back, um, you know, some of this uh, fancy technology that, that we use in our mobile devices and uh, some other cool gadgets. So, um, so this is, if you guys are thinking about the industry, you can think along these five different areas. Um, you know, they're different, there's opportunities in each area. Uh, and so now I'm going to move to like what the industry look like today. Um, this is the current size of the African space economy. Uh, there's currently close to 20 billion worth of revenue annually. Uh, you can see majority of this is coming from GNSS and similar services. So that's global navigation satellite systems and similar services. Uh, you know, some of these chips in your phones that you don't even know exist, um, you know, uh, in aviation, uh, maritime. Whenever you guys think about positioning and navigation, this is this is the technology that back it. And there is a lot of, um, you know, um, from the services itself to like the technologies, the chips, uh, there's a lot of values in this that have been sold to Africa. And we're talking of about $11 billion worth of annual revenue. Uh, and then you've got your satellite TV services. I'm sure you guys know DSTV, you know, or, um, or Canal TV, depending on the country you come from. So, um, you know, uh, satellite services are what back up, um, you know, your DSTV. Your DSTV basically is using satellite services. And the revenue from these industry segments is about 5.6 billion. And then you've got fixed and fixed satellite services and mobile satellite services. So uh, the simple way to think about this is your internet. Um, you know, um, but I mean, of course, most of the revenue in this area are to like, you know, B2B and B2G, but, uh, you know, this is talking about internal usage and connectivity in general. Um, national budgets from African governments is about around 500 million. And then you've got the satellite manufacturing segment generating about $230 million. Your remote sensing and air observation services about 170 million and ground segment. Um, this is just our projection for 2026. So this is just to summarize the fact that the industry is growing. Um, one of the things we're seeing in Africa, which, you know, you guys, which could also be an important information for you is that more African governments are now investing in space program. So even if you're coming from, uh, you know, country that you probably think does not have a space program it's most likely they are conceptualizing one. So the budget, the amount of money these African governments are spending on their space program has been steadily increasing. Uh, you know, over the last seven years alone, over $3 billion have been spent, uh, you know, just on national space budget. So more countries are developing space program, and this is a sign of a growing industry. Uh, you can see the distribution of the budgets for this year, which is around 491 million. So depending on the country you come from, you can see like how much your country is spending on space. Uh, so you've got, you know, the big countries like South Africa, Algeria, uh, and maybe Nigeria and Egypt spending, you know, a lot of money, uh, double, triple digits and millions of dollars. Uh, and then you've got uh, smaller countries like Ethiopia, Rwanda, Angola, you know, spending also reasonable amount of money. Uh, and then other countries like Zimbabwe, uh, Uganda, Gabon, Ghana, um, and all, you know, also with a sizable budget. But this is just to help you see, uh, you know, how much investment the government is making in their space program. Talking about the new space uh, industry. So this is like the, you know, where the commercial players, uh, the businesses where the play. Um, I think right now we've got over three hundred companies operating in the, you know, in the industry value chain. You can also see the distribution of these companies per 
per country. This is important because if you want to work in the industry, you probably have, I would say, maybe three options. It's either you work for the government, so maybe you go work for the space agency or the ministry, um, or you work for a private company. So this is the distribution of those private companies. Uh, maybe the third option is to work in academia, uh, you know, maybe teaching or lecturing and things like that. So this is this is an important statistics for you guys. So you, a lot of the companies in the industry are, you know, they're in South Africa, in Kenya, uh, in Egypt, in Nigeria, in Rwanda. Uh, there are some countries that, you know, private companies are struggling there. Uh, but you can also see how the chart is going up, which means that, uh, you know, more companies have been established in like the last decade. It's not just, uh, you know, the number of companies that is quite interesting, but the fact that these companies are also able to attract investment. Um, you know, in the last, uh, I think since 2015, which is about nine years ago, uh, over $184 million have gone into some of these companies. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a growing industry and, you know, you can also see that investors are, are quite, um, you know, happy about the growth on the industry and which is why they're also investing. Uh, so there's a lot of venture capital fund coming there, uh, private equity grants, even debt financing. Uh, but, you know, it's important to let you know that majority of the companies in the industry are actually bootstrapping. Uh, bootstrapping is pretty much saying that, you know, they, they don't have investors. So they're growing the company using the revenue that they actually get from selling the product and services. Um, these are some of the priorities of space program, you know, over the next decade. For a lot of countries, they're interested in building critical infrastructures like grand station, uh, manufacturing and assembly integration testing facility, uh, building satellites. Some are interested in capacity <laughs> development, uh, training, education, uh, and all of that. And we're also seeing uh, a few countries thinking about propulsion and launch technology. So, you know, some countries don't just want to be building and launching satellites. Some of them want to be able to launch these satellites using their own rockets from their own soil, something we've not had yet in Africa. Um, this is the distribution of, you know, appetites for satellites in Africa today. So I think currently all these countries have launched about 60 satellites, uh, but by 2017, uh, we're estimating that between now and 2017, we're estimating about uh, 105 new satellites to be launched. Uh, so this is to show that, you know, like I said, a lot of countries are trying to develop space program. You can see the distribution here. Uh, you know, by 2027, almost 25 African countries will have launched at least one satellite into space. Um, Moving on from, you know, the satellite market to like the communication, uh, the satellite communication market. Like I said, there's a lot of uh, growth in this. In the past, uh, this industry, this market was, uh, you know, dominated by um, geo operators like Intelsat, Eutelsat and the likes. Um, but we're seeing the rise of new technologies today. Uh, I did mention Starlink. We've got one web, so all of these guys are now coming to Africa to establish footprints. Uh, and as they're coming, it would also open up uh, new opportunities for people, uh, because you know some of these guys have to hire people to work for them in Africa. Um, moving on from satellite communications to air observation segment. Um, I mentioned that we've got about two, about 300 companies operating in the industry today, but majority of those companies are actually air observation companies. Uh, and this back up what I said uh, from my first slide about the fact that majority of the people that are working in the industry are working in the air observation uh, you know, area. Uh, and you, know, you can see the distribution of the companies uh, and where they're building product and services for. Uh, um, 
And majority of them, like I said, they're, they're involved in geospatial application, remote sensing, digital mapping, uh, you know, using space-based technology for agriculture and other applications such as insurance and all. Um, lastly, um, I want to talk about the African Space Agency. So while, you know, a lot of these countries are trying to develop national space program, uh, the continent also now have a continental space program called the African Space Agency. Uh, so this is all African countries coming together to run a continental space program. And I'm mentioning this because um, I understand, I think you guys are just leaving high school. So in the next five years, when uh, most of you uh, will have graduated university, uh, I think you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities in this agency for you guys to work. Uh, the agency is already operational, uh, and in the next few years, they will start hiring people that will work uh, in this way. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop my presentation here. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm happy to answer uh, any questions you may have. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, we did have one question, which I, I think I tried to answer. Um, and that was just around, what did you mean by a B2G? Um, and what I mentioned was the B2G is business to government. And I gave an example of Intelsat selling connectivity services to governments. Um, and uh, as opposed to B2B, which is business to business. So um, I, I think, uh, I hope I clarified that uh, correctly. Um, okay, so I think um, some questions are going to start coming in, but um, one of the one of the questions that I have for you, Tamida, is um, what 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 subjects or what studies do you think uh, one should pursue to be best positioned? uh in the space industry you mentioned that you started off by studying meteorology um if you were to start again would you make the same choice um uh, what would you recommend um yeah yeah thank you very much for that question yeah so like i said i my undergraduate was in meteorology um my master's uh, was in satellite applications. Um, so it was, I did my master's at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow. Mm. And the program was uh, in, the, uh, in the faculty of mechanical and aerospace engineering. So there is a okay. bit of that that is, you know, like engineering. Um, but it's a it's a tough question to ask because you can actually study a wide range of things. It depends on, you know, where your interest lies. Like, what do you want to do? So, if your interest is in building technology, you know, you want to build technology, then engineering is a good start. I understand that um, uh, in Africa, you that we don't have a lot of universities that offer like aerospace engineering as a program, uh, but that's okay. You can just study your mechanical engineering or study your electronics engineering, and you're good to go. Um, you can always specialize at uh, master's or, um, in fact, sometimes you don't even need to specialize. Like you can have a mechanical engineering or electronics degree and have an entry level job at a, at a satellite manufacturing company. The, the the knowledge base is like easily transferable i mean of course if you mm -hmm. want a higher degree like a master's then you can specialize uh but you know a lot of a lot of the guys that i know that work in the industry and are building technology uh they either do you know mechanical engineering um electronics engineering uh even computer engineering uh yeah pretty much Engineering, if you want to build technology, if you want to work around, um, if you want to work around uh, air observation or space application, um, 
there are universities in Africa today that now have full fledged degree in like remote uh, my I I am a in Nigeria uh, as I use Nakure and they offer um they offer degree program in remote sensing and GIS. Mm. Uh I know University of Nairobi does the same thing. University of Maka Makerere in Kampala. There's a whole lot of universities that also offer like degree program in remote sensing. Uh, so that's a good start for if you want to work in the air observation uh market. Now, there are programs you can also do that are like um, let's say specific to application, but you can like get the the remote sensing skills on the on the side like. I, I, for example, I did meteorology, which is pretty much weather related stuff, right? But as part of that program, I took classes in GIS, you know, which helped me to, you know, build, um, build my portfolio around that. So, um, for air observation, remote sensing is great. Um, if you want to do astronomy, there are also a lot of universities offering astronomy in Africa, um, astronomy or astrophysics in fact you can even just study physics there are there are universities that offer sorry one second my my daughter is making this let me reduce the garden okay better yeah apologies for that um i was talking about astronomy so there are even universities that offer like physics as a degree but you can get into the program and your your dissertation or your project can be around astronomy. Um, I I understand that there are limitations to some of these courses in, in Africa because a lot of, depending on the country you come from, a lot of universities don't offer this program, but you can always find something very clear. Like when I was entering university, I, I wanted to do um, aerospace engineering and there was no university offering that. So I opted for mechanical engineering. Um, and eventually I, I got a I got admission for mechanical engineering and and another university offered me meteorology. And I think I was already scared of engineering or something. So I just took the the meteorology option. So um if you so so for 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 a lot of these things, uh even if you want to work in the satellite uh, communications industry, you want to work in navigation and positioning, just having uh, an engineering background is very good. You can always specialize. Let's say you want to do masters or, you know, you want to get straight into the industry. You, you can always do that. The only thing I want to mention is that with all of this program, uh, there are easy paths to like the industry. It's only astronomy that is kind of like a bit difficult in Africa. And I think it's actually not just in Africa, globally. Uh, most of the people that go into astronomy end up in academia. Uh, so, uh, you know, you should have that at the back of your mind because there are, we don't have a lot of industry jobs for astronomy and astrophysics professionals. So, um, you know, if you want to be a professor or you want to teach, um, you know, astronomy is a, is a good career path. And just lastly, we've got a platform where we actually post about, because I know some of you are probably graduating and, you know, you're looking for programs to get into. We, we post a lot of scholarships, opportunities in, in some of these areas, so you can check it out. Um, Okay, someone is raising his hand. Right. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sorry that, yeah, he's in line uh, because, uh, so Ezeel, uh, yeah, um, we have a number of questions here. And and I think what you've done is you, you've, you have actually touched on some of it. So um, Josh, uh, Josh De Silva is asking, uh, what is the best skill for high school students to start learning? to help fast track their prospects for getting into the space sector? Um, I know as part of this program, you guys are probably doing programming. I think that's a great start. Um, you know, it's your programming skill is easily applicable whether you want to 
build satellites or you want to even go into earth observation market so uh programming i, I would say just go for it. i just uh you know keep writing codes basically yeah, I must say, I completely agree with you because that's what we, that's where we found the shortage in our business is getting people who really know how to develop code and it's embedded coding. It's not, um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty complex. Um, so I do know there's a shortage there. Um, Grace is asking, um, what inspired you to start space in Africa? Um, good question. Um, so um one second please i think you just need to step away quickly uh so he'll be coming back yeah yeah Great. just give me one minute. my daughter is i, I just want to get out of here one second please. no 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 that's fine no worries It's all part of the human condition. We have families. <laughs> so it's great. We all understand. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. So um actually, so why did I start space in Africa? I so a bit about my story. When I when I go into the undergraduate program in Nigeria, I I always have this interest for space. So what I did throughout my I spent uh my degree program was five years and what I did for that five years was uh, I mean of course I learned how to code um but more importantly I was volunteering for like space organization so you know he he it provided me like the needed network for when I graduate so you know I joined a lot of organizations I volunteered for them uh and when I when I graduated I I knew I was going to start my own company and I was really struggling with, okay, what is the company going to do? Uh, so I, I got an opportunity to, uh, to be in Colorado Springs in 2017, um, just right after I graduated. Uh, and it was for, for a, a conference. It was, uh, it was a very large conference. It was, I think it was also my first time outside of Nigeria. Um, and, you know, at the conference, I, I noticed, of course, it was, um, you know, it was Americans and a few Europeans and all. And I was trying to tell them about, oh, you know, some African countries are also trying to develop space program and all. And I realized that everything happening in Africa regarding space and satellite, uh, the the American folks were not aware of it. Um, and and I felt like, oh, you know, there's actually a gap here to to tell the African story. So that was why. You know, I started space in Africa. The the initial goal was okay. You know what? We're gonna report about every space activity going on on the continent so that people would be aware. And it's also important because you actually can build an industry without proper data and information. Uh so this was lacking, and you know that was what I set out to do. Uh, make information and data readily available, and then we started doing you know market studies, research, and analysis. Uh, some of the data, for example, actually all of the data that I showed you in my presentation, they were from research that we did in Denali. So, um, and, you know, our work since 2018 has sort of like helped bring the industry together also, because we can leverage on everything we're doing to bring all the players together. And eventually that's how you, you grow the industry. So um, that's a bit of my story. That's sort of like what inspired me to start a company. Fantastic. That's excellent. Thank you so much. And yes, I, I agree with you. Um, the I, I, find, I find definitely in the US, uh, everybody's quite insular. It's kind of like, it's only about what happens there. And then everyone's quite surprised that, you know, things are happening in the rest of the world. Um, and, you know, certainly what we've seen is, is over the last decade, there's been a lot of progress in China, Russia, India, Japan, uh, so, um, so yes, what's really great is that the, 
the space industry is now very global. It's not uh, just isolated in, you know, very wealthy economies. It's uh, definitely, it's for all of us to participate. Uh, then Bennett has a question, what unique challenges and opportunities do you see for the space industry in Africa? I think to quite a large extent, you covered that in your presentation. Um, but is there anything you'd really like to add in terms of where, what you see as unique challenges or opportunities that we have? Uh, yeah, I think the, I think one of the, one of the challenges that we we have today, and you can also see that you see it as an opportunity. Like I said, is the fact that we're unable to build our own technology. Um, and so what I mean is that um when so <laughs> this way i i don't want to be discouraging but you've got a lot of space agencies in africa for example that would hire people but they don't actually have stuff for them to do um because they're still outsourcing all of their manufacturing and stuff uh so this what what this has led to in Africa is that you now have a lot of people trained in Africa and trained overseas refusing to come back to Africa to work. So they end up working for like, you know, Europeans and American space companies. Um, I don't know if I would say it's, I mean, it, it depends on the, from your, it depends on your viewpoint. It could be seen as a good thing, uh, you know, in the sense that Africa is exporting talent, but it could also be seen as a bad thing that, oh, we can't redeem talent because we don't have job for them to do. So um, so just to uh, let you know that, especially if your skill set is in manufacturing, like today, a lot of the engineers and well-trained people we have, uh, you know, they most of them actually end up leaving Africa to go work in Europe and in America, even in Asia. Um, so yeah, that's it, it's both a, an upside and, and a downside to it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree with you because yesterday I had a conversation with Rocket Lab, uh, which they're founded in New Zealand. And it's really interesting because that is a population of not even 5 million people, and they have a very successful uh, space industry in New Zealand. And um, roughly half the number of people that they hire in New Zealand are from the African continent. So they've got really top class engineers uh, working for them who come from the African continent. Um, and uh, yeah, so that so what we have is we have a lot of we have a lot of really great skill um, here on the continent. So uh, the opportunity, as you say, there is to create those jobs, start a business yeah. to create those jobs, so that those people can stay. Um, also, Temida, what I personally have found being uh, South African and being on the continent is. As Africans, we're very happy to travel on the African continent. You know, sometimes we find, I'm sorry to say this, but there's, there's, there's a number of people, you know, from the rest of the world where there's like, oh, I wouldn't even know where to start. And like, is it safe to go to Africa? And, you know, is it okay? And all of that kind of thing. You know, they, 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 they're reluctant to come to the continent. So for us to be here, we're going to be first in line to get business on the continent because we're here already, you know. So we've we've found that we've we've landed a lot of business on the African continent because we are here. Um, and uh, so yes, with the growing space industry, uh, I, I definitely think that uh, there's plenty of opportunities. Um, to me, Dara, um, how are you doing on time? I'm very worried because I think we've overstayed our welcome with you. How how are you doing on time? Yeah, I could probably take one more question. And, uh, okay, great. Okay, so um, the, we we do we do have a, a few questions here. Um, okay, so let's actually go with Seth's question. 
it's a bit similar to Josh's question. And that is, what are the best subjects um, that need to be studied in high school to make sure that one can actually become a space person? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you guys are like studying science. Um, because in, in Nigeria, when, when you get to high school, you've got to choose whether you want to study science or art or commerce or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. but I would say that, you know, your maths, your physics, uh, you know, those are like, you know, very, very important. Um, you know, especially if you're considering the, the science part of space as a career path. So whether um you know whether it's engineering or application uh i think your math and your your physics are very very critical and i think you also have to even do well uh in both subjects in order to get a university admission to to study uh anything related to space so i, I would say that's a good start um i also want to mention that i mean it's it's possible that maybe there's one or two of you guys that are not interested in science or, you know, that maybe you want to study hard or you want to study commerce or, or whatever it is. But, you know, usually there are, there are rooms for everyone in the space industry, you know, basically, uh, you know, almost, um, you know, whether you study business development or, you know, accounting or, you know, whatever it is, there is, there is always a room for, you know, for you. Uh, you can always, like, you know, model your career path towards uh, the space and satellite industry. But, you know, if you're considering the, the science part, um, you should take your math and physics seriously. Okay, and geography, fantastic. Ge geography is also, yeah, that's also quite good. Actually, you know, if you, your geography is very, is a, is a good, um, is a good fundamental for remote sensing. Uh, I'm doing my PhD in geography. You know, so it's a, you know, if you, if you do well in your geography in high school, that's a, that's a very good, um, you know, fundamental for remote. You, you would easily understand remote sensing and air observation. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the thing is what I found, I, I loved I loved geography at school, and I also uh, studied uh, geography as one of my subjects at university with my chemical engineering degree. And what I found is that you have to understand a lot of physics to be able to understand geography. You need to understand physics and chemistry to understand weather, you know, and physical chemistry to understand weather. You need to be able to understand physics to understand soil erosion, uh, continental drift. Uh, you know, orbital mechanics, whatever it may be. And of course, you also definitely need to have your mathematics to back that up. So yes, geography is one of those really nice practical subjects where you can take the theory of maths and the theory of physics and you can actually apply it in a real world setting. Um, that's what's yeah. so nice about geography. Timmy Dow, thank you very, very much. This has been fascinating. And thank you so much for for, for taking time out of your afternoon to join us. And um, uh, thank you also for the link. I can see that you put it in here in the chat for in terms of the opportunities that are available to everybody. And I really would recommend that everybody um, certainly subscribes uh, to, your, to your website, to your newsletter, your publications, um, incredibly valuable uh, information that you do you and your team distribute across the continent. Um, so, so thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, thanks once again for joining us. And um, for everybody, anybody else, if you think of further questions for Timmy Dower, please actually just pop it in the, into the discussion area on our Canvas uh, course, and uh, we'll certainly be able to get those questions to him. Great. Bye. Thanks yeah. so much. Have a lovely evening. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers.